So we're here with Amper here at Mobile World Congress. And hi, so who are you? Hey, I'm Matt Taylor from Ampere Computing. I uh, manage our sales and business development team here at Ampere. And this is the chip right here. Yeah, this is our first generation EMAG processor. So EMAGs are a family name for the Ampere server roadmap. Uh, this is uh, actually a product that we launched late last year. It's a 32 core ARM V8 processor. Um, it's our first generation as Ampere. We have uh, multiple generation, multiple products on our roadmap now, and we'll be starting to sample our next generation product later this year. And uh, and hi, so who are you? My name's Scott Hara. I'm uh, from Ampere, and what we're demoing here is uh, an edge compute solution where we combine NGIC, the networking stack, along with big core problems, like in this particular case, we're running a Cassandra database to run data analytics. This is one example of many. We also have deployments where we're showing off gaming in the cloud, machine uh, learning applications in the cloud, as well as other data analytics uh, frameworks. So what are we standing next to right here? Yes, yeah, so this is actually a Vapor.io chamber, which is um, actually a, a partner of ours, where they're actually building these, think of these as edge data centers that they're deploying in multiple locations around the world. Uh, what we're showing here is actually one of the racks of servers that they have in one of these chambers with the Ampere uh, server. This is actually a Lenovo server that's actually production today. So this is the Lenovo HR350A. So this is a Lenovo production server that you can buy from Lenovo. Uh, high volume production, shipping to multiple customers now in all sorts of geos around the world. Lenovo is one of the biggest uh, manufacturers of this kind of stuff? Yeah, they're you know top five OEM in the world. Um, you know They have a very large presence in basically every geography in the world. Um, we've actually launched two servers with them, both a 1U and a 2U version of this. We launched those back in November of 2018. And um, how's the performance? Yeah, from a performance perspective, uh, really our value prop is around performance per watt and performance per dollar. So performance wise, we're about equivalent to a Xeon 6130-ish. Um, so basically high end of the gold family of the Xeon roadmap. We're similar performance, but we're a fraction of the price. We're, we're somewhere between half and a third of the price for the same performance that you get with the Xeon Gold. Half and a third of the price. Correct, yeah. And this is Mag 1. Yes, correct. But it's building on the uh, history of uh, Applied Micro's uh, designs over the years, right? Yeah, so the history of actually Ampere is we bought the assets of Applied Micro's X-Gene product. Um, so they had done actually two generations of ARM server, 64-bit ARM servers actually, technically. Uh, we actually bought the company. We actually took the design they had in flight, which was the X-Gene 3 design, and brought that to market, made a few enhancements to the design, and took that from basically what was a database to production in under a year. That's our first generation product. That's the EMAG product that you're seeing here. Database? Yeah, so target workloads for us on first generation product are really web scale. So think of things like WordPress, Drupal, Nginx, things like that. Uh, database, one of the unique things about EMAG, our first generation product, is it actually supports uh, eight channels of memory. So each socket has eight channels of memory. You can do eight or 16 DIMMs per platform. That's so, a lot of RAM. It's a lot of RAM. So for things like in-memory database, for example, our performance is phenomenal. And especially for the price performance that you're getting out of that, it's uh, leadership actually in the industry. So if you look at things like Cassandra, which is what we're showing off here, you look at things like Redis, you know, we have great performance and amazing performance per dollar on those sort of workloads. So uh, how much of the cloud is, needs this? Well, I mean, if you look at uh, you know cloud workloads, for the most part, they're very much in line with what we're targeting. So web scale, scale out sort of applications, database applications, storage, um, and you know, so we, we think that we can address a large, large portion of web scale workloads today, and increasingly going forward, 
as our next generation products come out and have even higher levels of performance, higher levels of features that allow us to address even more and more workloads in, in the cloud service provider. So you did talk about next gen also? Uh, all we're saying right now is we'll start sampling our next gen processor later this year. Uh, we're not talking about performance or anything like that. We have said that it'll be actually both one socket and two socket capable. So we'll have a multitude of designs and a multitude of OEM and ODM partners that we'll actually launch systems with when we bring this to market. The vision is to uh, power the whole cloud, right? Yeah, our There's real, a lot of opportunity right here. Yeah, our focus is really around two markets. So it's really around cloud and edge. Those are our two main markets that we're building products for. And you know, one of the things that's unique about Ampere is that we're not trying to build a product for everything and everybody. We are very focused on building solutions that address scale out workloads for the cloud and edge. And that's really what you're going to see us focus on from a, from a customer and also a, a design perspective. The cloud and edge is everything, it's, is it? Yeah, I mean, if you look forward, I mean, today, cloud's probably half of the server work, half of the server sales that are done. If you fast forward three, four years, we think that cloud and edge will be probably 70 to 75% of the total servers in the market. So we're focused on really where the growth is and also where people need high throughput, highly scalable solutions that, that deliver high performance at very efficient uh, performance per watt and performance per dollar uh, uh, designs. So, so how's the traction uh, right now for this chip. Uh, how is it going with the industry uh, looking at it and thinking about using it? So we have lots of POCs and deployments in flight. I think uh, momentum is building, right? This, we're, in a, we're in a time where we now have available performant ARM-based servers, and I think the software ecosystem is slowly catching up. Um, so it's going really well. And uh, it, it is also exciting to see uh, uh, what's called what Amazon is doing, yep. right? Because uh, it could be also an example of what you are just about to be maybe be doing too. Yeah, I mean, I think providing the, instances people can just use. Yeah, I mean, I think the Amazon announcement's been actually great for us. I think from an ecosystem perspective, it's done two things. One, it's made ARM server real, and it's something that now all the cloud providers are looking at and saying, how do I do something better even than what Amazon's doing? Which is great for the ARM server ecosystem. The other thing that it's done, though, is really started to accelerate software ecosystem. So, you know, one of the things that you've seen is there's a lot of software that's available on ARM today, but people haven't optimized as much as they should. And what you're seeing now is a lot of optimizations happening. A lot of people coming and saying, how do I make my, my workload run as well as it does on x86 on ARM? And that's really helping everybody. It's helping lift all boats. And it's creating, you know, frankly, a lot of interest in alternative architectures and making it easier for people to go and deploy. So I'm guessing in your office in the Silicon Valley, right, the headquarters, yep. there's a lot of very talented chip designers over yep. there? Like uh, you have a very strong team? Yeah, you know, one of the things that's unique about Ampere is we like to say we've brought together the best of multiple worlds from the silicon space. So we bought uh, the X-Gene team, the Applied Micro With team. Several year experience Several in Several years field. of experience. You know, it was roughly about 200, 250 people when we bought it. Since then, we've actually almost doubled the size of the company. We've built a large team in Portland. Uh, we've actually hired a lot of people from Intel there. So our chief architect uh, is actually, was chief architect for Xeon at Intel before joining us. Uh, we actually hired a number of Intel fellows now on both the silicon design side as well as the software side. We've hired a number of chip architects from Intel. And We've the also, CEO is from Intel. Chip, yeah, Renee James, our CEO, she was the former president of Intel. Uh, before that, she ran the software and services group at Intel. So understands what it takes to build and develop a software ecosystem around silicon. And that's really part of our strategy too, is it's not just about building silicon, it's about building platforms and an ecosystem to make this easy for customers to deploy. And you also have some expertise from, uh, from other places, right? Yeah, that's the other thing I was going to say, is you know, we've also been lucky enough to hire probably about 75, 80 people now from Qualcomm. So the Qualcomm data center team, unfortunately, they've divested of their, of their data center assets. We've been lucky enough to pick up a number of people from that team, and now we have probably close to 100 people in our Raleigh location as well. 
Yes. So that means basically you continuing where, picking up where they left off, kind of. Yeah. For also. The, yeah. For the most way. part, you know, we we followed a similar strategy as where Qualcomm was. I mean, we you know Qualcomm was very focused on cloud and edge, and also on the telco carrier sort of space. We're very much following the same sort of strategy, which is building scale out compute solutions that are highly efficient and deliver great performance per watt and performance per dollar. So how's the ecosystem in the ARM server industry? Uh, is it uh, a great place to customize, optimize, do something different, or how do you differentiate, let's say, from the AWS, whatever they do, and yeah. then there's all these other companies that want to do stuff like that, right? I, mean, I don't, want to, don't want to have ARM instances, potentially, they could be uh, Google, Microsoft, yeah. uh, Maybe Facebook. you want to take it a different way, right? Yeah. So I think, so at this point, ARM has become a first class citizen in most of the Linux Foundation projects, right? So from an OS distribution standpoint, it just works. Linux Foundation projects, most of them just work, right? So from a software ecosystem perspective, um, we're getting to the point where this is becoming very boring, right? So I think software is a key to all of this. This is, why, this is something that Renee James understood as a leader of, uh, SSG in her previous life, she became president of Intel. She understands the software ecosystem really well. We've hired a great number of uh, um, very experienced people in the open source community. So you'll see a lot of contributions in the software ecosystem from Ampere going forward. Yeah, our strategy from a software perspective is to upstream everything. We're not trying to build proprietary software stacks. Our, everything we do from compiler on up into open source communities is all open source and available to the public. And that's really our strategy and it's about you know, basically advancing the overall ecosystem. And to make this work great, you need to have a very strong software team. Right? Yeah. So Not yeah, just we, some cool chip designers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know part of the philosophy of the company, and it's one thing that Renee has enforced as you know uh, part of our ethos is it's not just about building silicon. Silicon is is important, but insufficient to actually be successful in this in this market. We're really focused on building platforms and building a software ecosystem to make this easy for customers to run. So uh, one of the things also is that there's. Uh, 8 billion people, everybody wants to have these cloud services more and more. There's more and more demand for this, and it's, I'm guessing the industry is building so fast that like, things can really ramp up very quickly with this. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, you know, it all comes down to uh, a couple, couple different things. One, having highly available platforms and having highly available um, you know, partners that can actually go and deploy this. So, you know, we have Lenovo at this point, we have a couple other partners that are building systems, but basically having availability of systems for customers to deploy that are truly data center class servers. I mean, this is a, this is a, a server from Lenovo that they sell at high volume around the world. That's number one. Number two is having the software ecosystem there that people can just go deploy. As Scott said, it's, software is actually becoming kind of boring now and that you can just actually go and run all of this open source software on ARM. And that's really part of our goal, is not to actually make software hard, to just make it easy and boring. So you can just go and deploy it, and an ARM server just looks like an x86 server. It looks and acts just the same. That's really what we're trying to get to. Do you work with the Red Hat? Yeah, Red Hat's a partner of us. We've shown Red Hat running on our platform. Um, you know, we've, uh, we're working with them not just on OS, but also on OpenStack and a number of other projects as well. Do you have any kind of Windows Server stuff yet? Yeah, so Windows, we've shown Windows running publicly on our server. Um, they've talked about actually their plans to actually run Windows Server on ARM, on ARM platforms in their data centers. Um, you know, right now, Windows Server is only available for Microsoft's internal consumption. That might change in the future, but as of today, it's a Microsoft internal consumption for their own cloud services only availability today. Can we, can we tape yeah. a discussion about the software team? Yeah. Do we have 100 people or do we have 200 people? In it's about 100 people. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. I, I think the important, yeah. so software is really important. Yeah. About a quarter of our company is dedicated to contributions to the open source community. So our strategy is to enable uh, optimized software in the open source, so compiler work, library work, framework optimization, will all be pushed upstream. Um, 
And uh, you were saying that this is already a bunch of percent better than some Intel products. So, uh, so why is it not millions of them shipping? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, well, well, at which point does it reach some kind of benchmark or something where it's just a no-brainer for everybody to just adopt it? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, two things. One is we just launched our product in November of last year, so mm -hmm. we've only been shipping now for three or four months. Um, we are seeing you know, tremendous ramp. We're actually seeing a ton of interest, a ton of, a ton of uh, customers coming and wanting to go and deploy. The reality is it takes a while for customers to onboard new technologies. And what we're seeing right now is large scale POCs with a lot of these very large cloud providers where they're actually working, getting all of their software not just running, but optimized. And that's really the stage that we're in is Go and get all of your hard, get your hardware deployed, get your software running, and now start to optimize your software so that you can actually get uh, performance that's at or above what you can get on your Intel platforms today. Do you talk about how it, how it compares with the Marvel solution, or we haven't really talked publicly around that? But you know, you could look at this is actually public data at this point. You could look. We're similar performance as to where the Marvel Thunder X2 product is at a significantly lower price and a significantly lower power. Oh, really? Yeah. So actually, that's a performance level people are very happy with, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and so you know, they're you know they're performing well. We we actually are very much encouraging our you know other ARM partners to bring different solutions to market. You know, one of the things you see is Marvell, for example, is very focused on the HPC market, which we think is great. It actually helps the overall ARM ecosystem develop and get meaningful deployments in different segments of the market. And so, while well, they're focused on HPC, that's great. We're going to be very focused on cloud and edge. Nice. That's really awesome. Is this a, like a working demo that works? Like it's running? It yeah, yeah, yeah. We can talk about the demo actually a little bit more. Actually, and show, talk so, about what's running. Yeah. The demo is actually an example of how software is just working, right? This is uh, NGIC uh, demonstration. So this uh, and it combines DPDK, Kubernetes, OpenStack on a standard Linux distribution, and it just worked. We got this demo up and running within, you know, weeks. It was reasonably simple. So it's the, just running right now, or well, it could be just click and run. Right. Oh, I think this one. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was running. Oh, there you oh, there. go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Cool. So, really looking forward to uh, what you can. Come up with an emperor. Does it have to do with the electricity? Or not? Yeah, it's the inspiration for the for the name of the company. Um, you know, it's um, you know, it's it's uh, the history, but there's not there's not really a you know, a large story behind it. All right. Yeah. Cool. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you very much.